Welcome to our lecture online. This example is somewhat similar to the previous one that we did, so it'll help us understand this technique that we use. It's already put into a format that makes it easy to find the critical points, both for the denominator and for the numerator. So for the denominator, what we're going to do here is we're going to take our inequality and change it into an equation where we have it equal to zero. And then we realize in the denominator, any value for x that makes the denominator equal to zero is a forbidden value. And so, for example, x cannot be zero because zero squared is zero. That makes the denominator zero and x cannot equal six. So the two critical points we get from the denominator is that x cannot equal zero and x cannot equal the value six. So that makes two critical points on the number line. From the numerator, we can see that if x is equal to two, the numerator is equal to zero. When x equals 4, the numerator is equal to 0. And when x is equal to negative 1, the numerator is equal to 0. Because after all, when the numerator is 0, the whole fraction is equal to 0. So the three critical points that we get is x is equal to 2, x is equal to 4, and x is equal to negative 1. So we have five critical points that we can place on the number line. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's the number line. Here's 0. I think that's good enough. Yes, all right, that'll be fine. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to place those critical points on the number line. So x equals zero is a critical point and x equals six is a critical point. Notice we cannot make those solid circles because zero and six are not part of the solution because x cannot equal those two values. And then we have two, four, and negative one. So put a circle on two, put a circle on four, and put a circle on negative one. Now again, those circles will not be filled in because it is greater than zero in inequality, not greater than or equal to, so the actual values at the endpoints are not included as well. Now we do realize that we have, I believe, six regions. We have region number one, we have region number two, here we have region number three, region number four, region number five, and region number six. We have six regions, this region here, two, three, four, five, and then six out to infinity. All right, now for each of those regions, we need to try some test points. So let's try, start with region number one, and we're going to let x equal, and any value to the left here within that region, how about negative two? So if x is a negative two, what we're going to find out is each of these binomials, plus here this term right here, are those, is that term positive or negative when x is equal to negative 2? So if x is equal to negative 2, negative 2 minus 2 is negative 4, that gives me a negative value. Negative 2 minus 4, that's negative 6, is still a negative value. And negative 2 plus 1, that's still a negative value. Negative 2 squared, that gives me a positive value. And negative 2 minus 6, so let's put a positive there. And negative 2 minus 6 is negative 8, that's a negative value. 1, 2, 3, 4 negatives, that's an even number of negatives. When I divide and multiply and have an even number of negatives, that makes the whole fraction positive, which means it is greater than zero, and therefore that region does satisfy the inequality. So the answer is yes. That region satisfies the inequality, so region number one is a good region. How about region number two? We're going to let x equal a value within that region, and it has to be a number between negative 1 and 0. How about negative 0.5? So negative 0 0.5. And again, we'll check each of those binomials in the x squared in the denominator and see if they're positive or negative. Now notice, since x is squared here, no matter if x is a negative or x is a positive, that will always be a positive. So this will always be a positive number. How about minus 0.5 minus 2, that's negative. Minus 0.5 minus 4, that's negative. Minus 0.5 plus 1, now 1 is bigger than 0.5, so this becomes positive, and minus 0.5 minus 6, that's negative. Notice I have an odd number of negatives, that means the whole fraction is negative, and a negative cannot be bigger than 0, so therefore that is not part of our solution. The answer is no, and that means region number 2 is not part of the solution. All right, let's get rid of those signs. I'm going to keep a positive there because we now realize that's always going to be positive no matter what the value of x is. 
So now let's check region number three. We're going to let x equal a value within region number three, and a good value would be the number one. So let x equals one. Okay, if x equals one, one minus two, that's negative one, that's a negative. One minus four, that's negative three, that's a negative. One plus one, that's a positive. There's always positive. And one minus six, that will be negative. Notice I have three negatives again. Ah, we're used to always having an alternating system where it's yes, no, yes, no, as far as meeting the requirement to satisfy the inequality. But in this case, we see two regions in a row that do not satisfy the inequality. All right, so region number three is also a no. So now we go to region number four. Let x equal, so in region number four, and let's get rid of the, the signs here. Region number four, how about the number three? Let x equals three, and let's see what all these are equal to. Three minus two, that's one, that's a positive number. Three minus four, that's negative one, that's a negative number. Three plus one is four, that's a positive number. That's always positive, and three minus six is a negative number. Notice I have two negatives, and the rest are all positives. And even number negatives means the whole fraction is positive. And positive means that it's bigger than zero, so therefore region number four satisfies the inequality. So x that would be number four, so the answer is yes. How about region number five? We're going to let x equal the number between four and six. How about the number five? All right. And let's get rid of all the signs. We'll leave that there because we know that's always positive. Now, x equals 5. 5 minus 2 is 3, that's positive. 5 minus 4, that's 1, that's positive. 5 plus 1 is 6, that's positive. 5 minus 6, that's negative. And notice there's only one negative. One negative means the whole fraction will be negative, and negative is not bigger than 0. So therefore, that region does not satisfy the inequality. Okay, so the answer is no for this one. And finally, region number six. Let x equal a number in that region. It needs to be bigger than six, so we're going to let it be equal seven. x will be seven. Again, we get rid of all the signs. Seven minus two is five, that's positive. Seven minus four, that's three, that's positive. Seven plus one, that's positive. And seven minus six is one, that's positive. Everything is positive, so the whole fraction is positive. And positive means bigger than zero. So that means that, yes, that region does satisfy the inequality. Yes. And so we'll put a little check mark there. We found three regions that satisfy the inequality. Everything to the left of negative one. So that means from negative infinity all the way to negative one, but not inclusive at the end point. And we have the region from 2 to 4, 2 to 4, but not including the endpoints, so therefore we have parentheses. And we have the region from uh, 6 onward, so starting from 6, but not including 6, all the way to infinity. And those three regions, as defined here, do all satisfy the inequality. And that is how it's done.